Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. If you have ever cared for a baby, you know that there's a whole lot of messes you get to deal with on a regular basis. In addition to diapers, there's feeding them and they're sometimes drooling and sometimes they're spit up. I've got a really great item that you're gonna love if you have a baby or if you're looking for a great gift to give. It's the waterproof burp cloth. This side is a soft, adorable flannel print and this side is waterproof. It's made with the same material that you can use to make reusable diaper covers. This side is very soft. It feels like fabric. It's fantastic. This shape protects the wearer from the front and in the back from spit up. So even if that baby is going to need a couple different outfit changes in the day, hopefully at least mom or dad won't. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new patterns or projects. Here's what you're going to need for supplies. You need about a third of a yard of whatever super cute 100% cotton flannel that you would like to use. You'll get about two burp rags out of that one third of a yard, but you need that width for the pattern. You're also going to need about a third of a yard of white or light colored 100% cotton flannel for the center. So you could really use any color or pattern that you wanted, but I just don't want it showing through my cute flannel. I tend to go with white because I know I can put it behind any color of cute flannel for the exterior. This is going to help absorb any spill or wetness that gets thrown up or spilled on the burp cloth. You're going to need at least a third of a yard of pole fabric. That stands for polyurethane laminate. It has a bit of a rubbery texture on the back of it. This is used to make diaper covers, so it's waterproof. This other side that is not rubbery feels like fabric, it's very soft. This is what's going to go on the back of the burp cloth. You're also going to want to print out the free burp cloth template. I have the link in the description box down below, and you need to print out two. So to get the template ready, you need to cut out both copies. Now that you have both halves, you're going to flip one over. You're going to line up both of these sides right where it says match to the second side. Just use some scotch tape to tape the two sides together. You're going to need a sewing machine and some matching all-purpose thread. I'm using 100% polyester, a fabric pencil or marker, fabric scissors, an iron and ironing board, sewing pins, and preferably sewing clips. I wanted to point out that before you move on to this next step, you should have washed both pieces of your flannel, washed them in the washing machine and dried them. Because they are 100% cotton, as they dry, they might shrink up a bit. And once you attach them to the pull fabric, which is not going to shrink, if you had not washed them, you get it all looking nice and sewn up, and once it gets washed and dried for the first time, the cotton may shrink and start to pull and twist in weird ways and look really wonky. So your best bet is just to wash this fabric, get it all dried before you even begin sewing it together. If you're lucky like me and you're working with sort of a remnant, then you know that's why this looks kind of odd because I've had to maneuver it around so I have it enough fabric for my next step. You want to be able to fold the exterior cute piece of flannel and your white piece of flannel you want to be able to fold it so that the top piece and the bottom piece are long enough to put your template on now you're going to be placing the template like it says here against the fold so you want to fold your fabric in half and have the wrong sides facing up toward you for the white cotton there really isn't a wrong side but i'm going to put both of my folds together and line them up I'm going to put my template on top and once I get it all lined up I'm going to use my fabric pencil and trace around the template on the back of this top piece. Because I have four layers of fabric stacked together I want to make sure it's not going to shift so I'm going to use pins and in the center in the center as in inside my drawn template line I am going to pin all of my layers together. Once you feel like it's pretty secure, you can use your fabric scissors to cut it out. Once you have it cut out, you can remove all your pins and unfold your pieces of fabric. 
Next, you're going to repeat the same process only with your pull fabric. I have the fabric sides together and the rubbery side up just because it slides around a little bit less. So I'm going to line the template up. Once again, on the fold, I have two pieces of pull sort of back to back. I have it folded in half and I'm going to trace around my template. Now with the pull fabric, you don't want to use pins because this is the waterproof side. Any holes that you poke in this will not heal or go away. They will remain. So we want to minimize any holes you poke in this because you want it all to be waterproof and keep that waterproof barrier intact. So I'm just going to hold this piece very securely and cut with my fabric scissors. Once you have all three fabrics cut, it's time to make what we call a fabric sandwich. We're gonna get it ready to sew. We're gonna start by putting the white flannel on the bottom. If there is a top side or a right side, you want that facing, actually it doesn't really matter, it's on the inside. This bottom piece can go whichever way you want. Then we want the cute flannel to go next. We're gonna lay that on top and we want the right side of that to be facing up toward you. And last on top is going to be the pull fabric. And we want the side that we want outside, the fabric side to be facing down. So the right side, you should have the rubbery side facing up. Get it all lined up and then clip, once again, not pin, but clip it in place. You wanna pick one side or the other. I usually do an end, it really doesn't matter where you do this, but I find the ends easier to work with later. I'm gonna clip that in a different color clip than the rest of it. I'm gonna leave about a three and a half inch section here at the bottom that I'm clipping off. I am not gonna sew that in the next step. So I'm marking this off. I know that the greens mean do not sew here for me. And I'm going to clip all the rest of it together. But remember, clip, not pin, because we don't wanna put holes in the pull fabric. Once you get it all clipped, it's time to bring it over to the sewing machine and beginning right here, just past this one that I've marked off, so I'm not gonna sew here. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go all the way around the outside with a 1 4 inch seam allowance, and I'm gonna stop right here. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn all the way around, you need to cut these curved edges just a little bit, not this spot where you've left it open, you don't wanna cut that, just leave that alone. But over here, starting here, kind of where the curve starts, you want to use a uh, scissors or snips and just cut in here. Do not cut your stitch line, but cut kind of right up next to it, about every half inch to an inch. And you wanna do that all the way around the curved edge. This helps it lay flatter when you flip it right side out. And just do that for both of the curved ends. Now through that hole you left in the end, you're going to flip things right side out. You wanna flip them right side out between the pull and your cute flannel and you just roll and push the inside to the outside it helps if you have a big long stick like this I got this in a bag of polyfill and I use it constantly and you just want to push all of your seams out you want all of the fabric to be pushed out not still rolled inside at this point, it's helpful to iron this flat just so your seams are a little flatter. Make sure that the exterior is in the front and that the pull hasn't rolled forward because you don't really want to see that. You want to see the cute flannel. Now we need to get this opening ready to close. So we are going to roll the exterior flannel around. I'm rolling it sort of around my white piece of flannel in the middle. And you want to roll it so that this curve looks naturally like the rest of the curve that you've already sewn. So get it rolled where you think it's gonna look good, about a fourth of an inch, just like your seams were. And then I'm gonna roll the pull inside as well. I like to have the pull be just a little bit farther in so it's a little bit shorter than the exterior, the flannel exterior, because I don't wanna see the pull from the front. I want it to be hidden. Once you have it looking like you want it to look when it's all done being sewn, I'm gonna take this back to the sewing machine. I am going to start just a little bit ahead of my opening and I'm gonna sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around the entire burp cloth to close the opening and also to top stitch it. And now it's done. Wasn't that quick and easy? You can whip up a whole stack in no time and have a really great set of burp cloths for yourself or to give away. Happy crafting.